turning to the diagnostic process, so the process that a vet goes through when they're first presented with an animal that's unwell. So in those situations, vets are required to be many things, anatomists, physiologists, radiologists, pathologists, and, and also in terms of manual procedures, very skilled in, in performing a number of interventions. From your perspective, how does anatomical knowledge fit into that complex skill set that vets are bringing to that situation? So we, we, as you said, we do a wide range of procedures, um, you know, partly as part of our clinical examination, but then partly to specifically find an answer. You know, aspirating uh, lesions, um, even if it's as simple as a lymph node aspiration, or as perhaps more complicated as a CSF tap or bronchoscopy, um, you know, that, that knowledge of anatomy uh, is, is key. Uh, you know, with a, with an aid as well, if you like. Um, for example, with bronchoscopy, um, I always do that with a roadmap. There's a, there's the um, in Miller or you know in in uh, endoscopy textbooks. There's there's the the map of the primary bronchi, the trachea, and the primary and secondary bronchi. And whenever I'm doing bronchoscopy I always go and get that I've got the page photocopied and I go and stick it on on wow. the uh, beside the screen of the endoscopy machine um, and uh, and when teach when teaching teaching undergraduate students or teaching uh, residents I think it's really helpful to to look at the map and say well here you know here is the screen and we're down there down the the um, trachea and you know first first on the left here is the the, the right uh, primary bronchus, the right cranial lung lobe, you know. So um, having that map you know, make, brings it alive, I think, and and, and is necessary, I, I, I guess, for for doing the job properly. Well, wow, that's that's very interesting. So that that you still see that as an essential tool, um, and I guess what uh, this is also highlighting is, and this is a subject I keep coming back to in my conversations, is that. You're talking about, to some extent, I think, recognising normal and knowing what to expect so that you can then identify when you see something that's outside of the boundaries of expectation, say. Mm. Yeah, yes, that's 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 true. Um, I was going to say, we don't get to do many of these pr procedures on n normal animals very often mm. uh, because usually when you're doing a bronchoscopy, for example, there's a there's a clinically indicated reason to do so, uh, but that said, you know the the anatomy of the of the airways um, is a standard, is a given, doesn't change, um, and knowing that um, is uh, is important in the interpretation of what you see. A lung lobe torsion, for example, um, you, you can then see the the constricted and narrowed. Um, uh, Bronchus, it's usually the, the left you know, dog, it's usually on the left hand side, their left hand side. So I'm using my right hand because I'm looking down there and looking to the right. Um, so there's an example of a of a disease process that uh, puts that whole um, bronchial map a little bit awry. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'd, I'd like to give you an example of something that happened to me last week. I was doing a, a, a week with the a local specialty um, practiced um, nearby. Um, and we had a, a dog that required CSF analysis, showing signs of uh, meningitis and meningeal inflammation. And uh, um, we normally uh, use the uh, Atlanta occipital space into the cisterna magna as the the place um, to collect the spinal fluid, a, a high tap, if you know what I mean. And I was working with uh, with a, an intern, and I, I've I've taught if that's the right word. I've I've helped encourage, taught, shown many interns and residents over the years. You know how how to do CSF um, taps. It's it's quite a it's quite a challenging space because. As everyone understands, the, there's some important structures nearby, but but uh, again, using using uh, an anatomy book 
uh, and the landmarks, the palpable landmarks that are so critical for that procedure. And to, to be able to then visualize exactly where the cisterna magna is, uh, you know, is, is, is part of part of that an important part and so showing someone through that and helping them palpate that is is uh is part of the process uh, but but actually what happened last week with this particular one we were doing was um there are there are very large uh venous sinuses that and, and of course corinna you'll you'll remember the specific anatomical names of them and i know there are interarchuate um uh, sinus vein, veins and sinuses as well that go over the top of the spinal cord but but anyway to cut a long story short and i refer you to uh, big miller for specifics of the anatomy um i i put the needle into one of these and so we had a lot of blood um, fortunately that's not a serious problem it, it's not the spinal cord itself but it does then interfere with the cytological interpretation of the spinal fluid and we really did want to see what the process what type of inflammatory process was going on in this dog and so i decided to do a lumbar tap as well and it had been a very long time since I did a lumbar tap. But again, uh, the, ex the example I want to provide you is the, the knowledge of the anatomy, the palpation in this case of the spinous process of L6 um, to, be, to be able to find that uh, and then to be able to move the needle down and, and into the the spinal canal this is now right at the bottom end of the spinal spinal cord and the spinal canal and vertebrae and and you know i hadn't done this for a long time but to get to get an anatomy book and to think of the, about the anatomy and to palpate it and 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 it was very satisfying and rewarding to get a nice nice clean tap from down the bottom end 